Hi everyone, welcome along. Today we're going to look at draining the heating system and more often than not when you can't drain the heating system because there's no drain cock to be seen anywhere. Um, this quite often happens when you've got a drop system which I'll show you here on this piece of paper. So go and have a look. Um, here's one rough old drawing I've made out and quite often you get what they call a drop system. The rads upstairs are all piped along and then you get two pipes dropped down the wall and feed the downstairs lot. And then you find that someone has forgotten to put a drain valve on. So you can't empty it out. What a sticky problem. I mean the other thing you often find, I'll turn this over, um, is that another system, they've dropped one pipe down to one radiator downstairs and dropped in another room to another radiator downstairs and once again there's been no drain valve added. So what we're going to do, we've got to get a drain valve on there. And one of the answers I'm going to show you today um, is by changing the radiator valve to one of these. Uh, and this is a drain off type radiator valve. Um, now I will put a link on to buy these from my little Amazon links so if you need to get one um, these are the ones. Now one is with a small nut so check your radio valve. This is a particular type of valve with a small nut uh, but if you've got the large nut I'm going to put the link on there as well for the larger nut version as well if you've got the big nut. This particular one is the pegler small nut and what I'm going to do now is show fitting one of these the way I would do it um, without having to drain the whole system and just drain the rad. It's kind of a bit uh, not risque, but you've got to be a bit quick with the changeover, that's all. But I'll show you it now. Okay, this is the radiator we're going to put this drain valve on. Now, if you've got a thermostatic rad valve, obviously you want to leave that where it is. Now, these rad valves come with a lock shield, or you can replace, if it's an ordinary turn valve, uh, with the turn valve, because you get an option for both. Um, obviously, you're more than likely going to replace the lock shield end. So, it's fairly simple. Um, I'm going to put this one on here like so, make sure you've got room for it to go in. Now, first things first is just to turn the valve off just keep turning it all the way down to zero okay once it's down there she's off and obviously the next thing is to turn the other end off make sure it's off, not too hard just gently it's the lock shield end so once it's there it's there okay and we're ready then so next stage Okay, one little pointer to remember, actually, I should put this first, uh, is to remember how many turns that you turn this lock shield off. Um, because it's very important if it's systems balanced that you turn the new one, when we get it, on amount, the same amount of turns. Right, so if you turned it just once or twice, bear that in mind, and then when you set the new one, we're going to set it the same amount of turns. I know this one was only on a turn, a full turn. Um, that's why I didn't worry telling you, but obviously yours could be different. Just saying I should have said before we got to this stage, but no worries. Okay, next thing, best to drain this radiator because it would always keep dropping out the end um, rather than persevering with it running out the end when we undo this valve. It's better to get the air out of it, let the air in, sorry, and when we open it up the other end, um, she should run. Now, don't worry about it running. I've got a bit of rag down there. That will level off in a minute. As you can see, it's leveling down now. And now we're going to open this end and start draining procedures. So, here's the valve we're going to change. As usual, I use two grips like this. One of the grips, one's a spanner. I'll set the one for the spanner on there. And the reason I use these as well is to hold against. Don't try and undo that without holding against because you may buckle the pipe underneath. So it's very important that you have a pair of grips to hold against. I put them across the top there without injuring the top of the valve, put it on and then turn this one upwards like that. Once you've done that, you can let go and we should be away. Now, it'll be very slow, we've got to wait now because we're going to empty this radiator before we go too far. So, the bit we've got to do now, as you can see it's running out, is wait now for about five to ten minutes, or however long or big your radiator is. Um, it could be a longer time, it may be shorter. So now we've just got to wait till that's all empty. So we're at the next stage now, we've finished running out, we can now pull that out of the pipe, it's all empty, there's no more to come out of the radiator, and because this is switched off there's nothing to come out. So next step now, obviously it's pointing the wrong way to do anything, so we're going to loosen this nut off now and turn the radiator valve around this way. So once again, it's grips on the old radiator valve, okay, you don't want it twisted, because it'll only twist all around and it won't properly come off. So actually it goes anti-clockwise so we need to have that on there 
and that on there and just give it a twist like so. Alright, so that's loose now. We should be able to turn it easily once we've done that. Now once we've done that, you'll notice you get a slight weak there now. Now this is where you get a couple of options of what you want to do. Now you can tighten that back up to stop it weeping down below. Get the grips on there. Give it another little nip like so, and that's it. A couple of options you've got. You can either find an old piece of pipe like this. If you've got this type of valve with a small thread, stick it in there, do that up, and stick a hose pipe on the end of this, run it outside, open this valve with the pliers, and you will empty your system. It will all be drained out, what you want to work on. And that is the safe option. Okay. Now if you've got the nut with the big, if you've got the big nut type of valve, then if you find one of these, take it off your, your hose outside, if you've got an outside tap, um, this is the little connection, and this actually fits on the thread of the big valve nuts. So if you've got the large nut, that will fit on, and once again, you can just fit a hose pipe on there, open the valve and run the system out, and it's all empty. And that is the easy way if you don't want any mess. If you can afford to take a chance and a gamble with plenty of old towels and a bit of rag, um, and making sure that the nuts are the same, which they generally are these days, the threads are normally the same. If you want to do this idea, and it's not for the faint-hearted, but <laughs> take the top off, take the back end off. Okay, so we've got basically that that there now, haven't we? And it's sticking out like so. So what do we do? We turn this valve off on the new one, turn it right off. Right, that's right off. Make sure that the drain cock part of it is off. And once again, that's right off. I've turned it off already. And what we're going to do is we're going to put plenty of towels in that down here. I'm going to undo this nut with a the towel. There will be water there. I'm not going to say there won't be. There will be. And I'm going to flip this off, put my thumb over it, and then put the new valve back on. And this will save draining all the system out, emptying everything, and re really to put inhibitor in and all the everything else. But obviously, if you've got a heavily carpeted front room, uh, or you don't want to take a risk on this, um, then that's fine, don't do not do it. <laughs> uh, obviously I'm well practiced in this, but if you've got something that's not going to hurt, so I know floor or something like that, um, it's probably, it's up to you, it's worth a go. But at the end of the day, if you can't get it back on, you can still have your hose pipe ready and just flick it over the end of the pipe and it will still run outside and you'll be able to drain it off anyway and do it that way if, if you think you can't get the thread started. Alright, so that's what we're going to go for next. Okay, so we loosen this nut off now. Okay, make sure it's loosened off. And there she goes. After that, you should be able to do it with fingers. And don't worry about any water running down. It's going to be a bit of water here, okay? So what you do is you undo it and hold it on and undo the nut. Okay, make sure the nut's right off, ready. Okay, so once it's clear, we're going to lift this out and it will shoot up to begin with. So Dan, you better stand back a bit. <laughs> So, you ready? I'm going to flick this off of here. Now there will be a little bit of gush, ready? Okay, so you've got to be quick. Thumb over the end. Okay, we've now got a valve off. And I say if you're worried you can't get that back on, you could have a hose pipe handy and just flick it over the end of this pipe and let it run outside if you're worried about getting this bit on. Because this bit's, the bit's got to go on next. Make sure you get it right. Obviously you can see it's got to go like that. So that's the end there that's got to go over the end of this pipe. Don't worry about getting it in line with that because it will be in the way. Just stick it as long as it goes on clear. So have it ready and you've just got to get it on. It's just a little bit of water there. See that? It's not too bad. We've got it on and now we've just got to do our nut up at the bottom and that will do it. Get a start on it there. And there we go. She's done up. My fingers. Okay a little bit of mess there. We can wipe this all off in a second um, but we haven't had to drain the system. So, get that on there, once you've got that nut started, turn it back into the valve, like so, I don't think you see that there, Jan. So if we turn that, Jan's got the camera today, back in, there we are, do that nut back up. Now all we've got to do is tighten the nuts up, put it on the end of there, tighten that one up, and tighten the one on the end of the valve up, again, hold the gates like so, and and that is on. 
pretty simple, eh? One of my little plumber's tricks. It's a bit messy, but you know, if you can afford to do it, do it. it saves you a hell of a lot of work later on. You haven't got to top the inhibitor up or anything. Okay, remember that you turn this valve, the amount of turns off. So if it was once or twice, just turn this on once or twice, full turns, whatever it was. For me, it was one full turn, which was there. Okay. That's it, and there's a lock shield in, so I'm going to put a lock shield valve back on. So, having turned that on the amount that you turned it off in the first place, to make sure our balancing is about right, but do check it afterwards, it may need a tad more, a bit less, because it's a different valve, so it might not be quite two turns, or one, or whatever you turn it off, because it's a slightly different valve, but you'll soon be able to tell when you put your heating on. Okay, turn your thermostatic valve back on, or your ordinary one on, you can hear the air now coming out the top. Lead the valve, there it is, it's all there, didn't take much. To glue that, glue that off, and that's it. So there we are. That's how to fairly simply and easily get yourself a drain valve uh, in a system that hasn't got one, or it might be inaccessible. Or it may even be broken and not working at all. And that's one quick way of doing it that gives you uh, a drain cock uh, on one of your radiators. If you can do it nearest the back door, like me, it's nice and close to the back door. I can get a hose pipe on there now, short piece run it outside if ever I need to drain the system down. And I think they're a great idea. I've got I'll links on there for my Amazon shop for the thin one there, uh, for the thin nuts, like I showed you. And there's also one there for the fat nut as well. I'll put that up there as well. Okay, that's about it from me. Thanks very much for watching. All my videos, you know where to go, usual place. Derek from 33. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.